Hi, my name's Mike Sullivan. I'm from Stornoway Canoe Club, um, based in the Isle of Lewis. Um, just introducing a couple of clips from some films that we have put together. Uh, originally filmed by a guy called Hamish Gow. Hamish is in his early 80s and lives in Drimmon in Glasgow at the moment. Uh, and I, I made contact with him oh, probably about seven years ago when I was researching the first kayak crossings out to St Kilda um, which there haven't been very many of but in 1965 Hamish and his wife Anne uh, kayaked there in a canvas double uh, which was an absolutely amazing feat at the time uh, and it's been repeated maybe about 18 or 19 times since then um, really through that relationship with Hamish managed to establish that he actually had a fantastic archive of cinefilm as well as slide film. Uh, round about 2007-2008 we managed to get some of that cine film converted um, and put together into a, a range of clips with some music poetry attached to it called The Days Slash Past which we showed at a Sea Kayak Festival in Stornoway. Uh, and then most recently we've managed to convert some of his uh, film together uh, add clips to it, but also tried to recreate the, the notion of him being in kind of village halls and, and with his friends when he used to play back these 8mm films at the end of trips once he's edited them together uh, and he would actually narrate the trips and talk to the audience there. So we tried to create that and we tried to come up with an idea of a kind of series called Kayaks and Kodachrome. All the film and all the slides were shot in Kodachrome film. Um, and we, with the, the help of a uh, friend, Magnus Graham, who excellent filmmaker and editor, and his friend Hector McInnes, managed to put some sound as well as edit up um, the films into half an hour. And the first one that we've done is a trip from Glasgow to Galway in 1959, which is fascinating and incredible, uh, and really it is a fantastic record of that journey. Um, so we edited that up and got Hamish to talk over the film uh, uh, really to try and you know bring back some of those memories bring back some of those thoughts that he had but do it in a way that was relevant to the film actually being played in real time so you'll see an example of that in the kayaks and kodachrome uh, series and you'll hear his, his wonderful narration uh, uh, and again this was done you know just uh, just in, with Hector and Magnus giving up their time and Hamish been really keen to be involved in this we have now a uh, uh, a load of other films that we need to try and do the same, give the same treatment to, and almost kind of create a kayaks and Kodachrome series. We've so we've got we've got six other roles of Hamish's film, which we're currently trying to get converted at the moment, and we are also um, you know we're also looking back on some of the other films that he he has created, um, stuff around Jura, Rum. Uh, Outer Hebrides, uh, more uh, exceptional footage which you'll see in the days flash past, especially based around Staffa uh, and a trip that he did to Mingley uh, in the early 60s. This stuff is absolutely vivid and fascinating as, it's, as it is as a historical uh, sort of like archive of kayaking, well really the birth of kayaking in Scotland. But, but there's also something about the, the particular time, the particular mode of travel uh, and something really about the kind of freedom that, that, that people were beginning to, to get a sense of in, in that particular era that's really replicated in this film that, 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 that's quite unique. How you interpret it is really open to your own particular interests. But even outside of kayaking circles, we've had a lot of people who comment on it and find it very evocative and, uh, and, and especially the way that Hamish filmed it um, he wasn't a trained filmmaker, but to have filmed the way he filmed and at that time the way he recorded the journeys was really quite amazing. That a really fantastic artistic slant to it. This is also replicated in the slides um, uh, and pictures that he's taken, and he's got an amazing catalogue. He's got hundreds of slides. So we really want to be in a position to try and archive all those slides, get them converted digitally, get all the films converted digitally and have these available in an online archive or at least have them available in an archive somewhere. Um, so there's many different angles to this that we'd really like to pursue and we need as much help as we can get. Um, a, a lot of this uh, uh, conversion has been financed by Hamish himself um, but also with a few 
couple of hundred pounds donation from individuals in the kayaking world. So we really need more help. Um, desperate for ideas. I'm not sure if uh, people watching this might have other ideas about who could help us out, how it could be um, transferred, how it could be created, what ideas could come from this. Um, so it would be really good to kind of have your feedback from this. Certainly one of the, the important things that the whole development uh, created was a, a recreation of the actual trip to St Kilda last year, which uh, Mac TV f uh, filmed and edited for uh, BBC Alba, and it was a very long uh, programme on Trusa uh, called uh, The Kayak Girls, uh, and that recreated the journey to women from Stornoway Canoe Club actually were involved in the building and uh, of the canvas kayak and, and uh, kayaking it out to St Kilda in real time. Uh, they got there and the film's a testament to that. But that also included a lot of Hamish's old film. So again, uh, uh, another you know another great spin-off from this, but we really want to follow this up with more, be in a position to, to, to pull together all of Hamish's films. And, and while Hamish is still alive, be able to get his, uh, his, his thoughts, his feelings, his uh, sort of evocative memories from the trips that I really haven't seen the light of day for, well, nearly half a century. Anyway, thanks. Uh, I'll be supplying my contact details. Have a look at the, the, the clips that are coming up. See what you think and hopefully uh, something will happen from there. Uh, and thanks for watching. This is a canoe trip undertaken by three members of the Scottish Horses Canoe Club, Dougie Gilchrist, Joe Reid and myself with the camera and Ian Moore from the Fourth Canoe Club. The four canoes were designed by Joe Reid and built at home by the members involved. These prized canoes had proved themselves in previous trips as very good sea canoes. They carried a stack of gear, tents, sleeping bags, spare clothing and enough food to last us for about 10 days without touching civilization. The boats you see are the Marchioness of Long and the Marchioness of Graham. And here we are on our way down the Brumilaw, as it's still called to this day. In the background you can see the old Kingston Bridge. There's no sailings from the Brumilla now, so probably this was the last of these particular sailings. It was an overnight sailing with a lovely calm night across to Londonderry on Ireland. Of course, in the old days, that was the feature of the Glasgow Fair fortnight, and most of Glasgow, at that particular time, left from the Blue Law for holidays down to Rothsey, Trim, etc. The cranes you see in the background are no longer there. Shipbuilding in the Clyde is almost non-existent now and in their place are high-rise flats. Passes. They have 